meaningless pile of atoms, whereas theology and idealism see sense, purpose, and reason in everything, end quote. So I think Gödel's idea that the zeitgeist is moving to the left is, is very strong, actually, and it's really quite striking that people sort of are determined that evolution should remain mindless. Any suggestion that there's anything else, they fight fiercely. You might say, isn't it an open question? Let's look and see. They seem to have this really sort of inbuilt idea that uh, it's, it's really got to be meaningless. <laughs> um, um, okay, to continue. But now back to mathematics. Rhoda calls mathematics a science that deals with facts like any other science. But is mathematics just like other sciences? Let's compare. For years, biologists, having already discovered in detail the properties of the gene, the laws of heredity, tried to discover something more, something more fundamental to it, what the gene itself actually is. The same with physicists and the atom, and later with black holes and now perhaps with strings. By contrast, mathematicians, in spite of the great work of Frege, sneer at philosophers who are concerned with such questions as what numbers or sets or functions really are. Timothy Gowers thus writes in his little book, Mathematics, a very short introduction, his contribution to a very interesting series of brief introductory texts put out by Oxford University Press, a short introduction to blank, to X, Y, Z, to existentialism, to Judaism, to etc. So here's one is mathematics uh, introduction. Here's a quote from Timothy Gowers. There are certainly philosophers who take seriously the question of whether numbers exist. The main purpose of this chapter is to explain why it is that the mathematician can and even should happily ignore this fundamental question. <laughs> he recommends not thinking. Okay, end quote. Indeed, Rota himself speaks about what, uh, surreal numbers in another paper of his, A Mathematician's Gossip, and says, quote, we will wait another 50 years before philosophers get around to telling us what surreal numbers, quote, really are. So he also derives that philosophical enterprise. Amazingly, Frege, who did to the foundations of mathematics what Newton did to physics, is the patron saint of analytic or for Rota, mathematizing philosophers, not of mathematicians. Frege's foundations of arithmetic, the Grundlagen, is required reading for all first-year PhD students in philosophy at MIT. I haven't checked, but I dare say there's no similar requirement for the PhD student in mathematics. It is the structures themselves that matter, one hears from mathematicians, not what's in the structures. The structures of what? If there are no numbers or sets, can there be infinite structures of numbers or sets? Can one substitute genuine material objects for numbers, say grains of sand? But are there enough grains of sand around to do the job? Should we speak rather not of actual but of possible grains of sand? Would merely possible material objects, however, really be a metaphysical improvement over actual abstract numbers? And what are the structures themselves? Do they really exist for the mathematician, or should we only speak of structures of structures? And yet far from attempting to answer such questions, mathematicians, as we have seen from Timothy Gowers, all too often only counsel us simply to ignore them, and to ignore the related question of whether the axioms on which the theorems about structures rest are themselves actually true. Listen again to Gowers, quote, what matters about an axiom system is less the truth of the axioms than their consistency and usefulness. What a mathematical proof actually does is show that certain conclusions follow from certain premises, such as the principle of mathematical induction. The validity of those premises can safely be left to the philosophers." End quote. In Gödel's words, for such mathematicians, mathematics is no more than, quote, a mere game of symbols according to certain rules not supported with insight, end quote. Compare Frege and Piano, whom we just heard about, uh, on the so-called Piano postulates for number theory. Actually, it's the, should we call the Frege dedicant Piano postulates, actually. All three had them. Uh, Frege derived them from his theory. Um, others postulated them. Piano, the mathematician, simply postulated his postulates, just as Gowers recommends. By contrast, Frege attempted to prove his from a small set of axioms so basic that, as the very foundation of reason itself, their truth could not be questioned. 
No physicist or biologist or any other respectable scientist would speak the way Gowers does about his lack of concern for the truth. Why is mathematics different? Is it a genuine science or not? Science, I think, it aims at the truth. Other things don't. Chess doesn't aim at the truth, uh, uh, etc. Baseball doesn't aim at the truth. Um, is it a genuine science or not? Frege's entire philosophy of mathematics, I suggest, consists of an attempt to put mathematics on a firm foundation as a genuine science. Everything he does follows from this one premise. Mathematical induction, for example, which Gower simply suggests we simply accept because it seems right, or at least useful. Frege attempts to derive from more basic principles via rigorous proof. Of course, ultimately for Frege,